Do you find yourself quilting with the same fabrics, the same colors? Are you hesitant to try new and unusual color combinations? Well, check out these beautiful black and white graphic prints in the background on this particular quilt. Here's a charm square quilt that you are going to love. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and this is a fun and easy charm square quilt with half square triangles, and I'm going to show you my tips and techniques on how to get perfect points on those half square triangles. You will love the simple methods that you can apply in order to get perfect points on all your half square triangles as well. There's also a free printable tutorial down below that has a pictorial overview so you can reference that when you're making your own half square triangles so you'll know exactly what steps to follow along the way. So let's get some beautiful, bright, bold colors like these reds and pinks and a great background that's really going to bring it all together. Maybe these batik black and whites might interest you. We are going to make a fabulous quilt and I can't wait to show it to you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, and don't forget, please subscribe and let's do a thumbs up. Given the holiday season upon us, I thought pink and reds would be great for this next quilt. And what fun then to go with something completely different than a black and white print background. Generally, this is not what you would choose for a background, but against some really dominant colored fabrics, this is going to work out really well. Now, I did choose this pile over this, but I wanted to show you that if you do black and whites, you can get some very sparsely printed so that it looks more white to more densely printed, which makes it look more black. And I don't want to use these heavier fabrics. I say heavier because they're more saturated. They have more print. They are more full of design. And they're not going to give me as much contrast against these than the fabrics that have more of a white background. So this is what I'm going with. And this quilt will require four charm packs or 84 of the focal fabric and 84 of the background fabric. And those are five inch squares that we're going to use. I need a total of seven fat quarters in order to cut my five inch squares that I need. And you notice here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one of them has already been cut into and I might not have enough. So I had this extra which matches, so that'll work out good. These are a couple others that I had thought about putting in. And there's already enough of this one, so I was going to take that out. And again, these are just a bit more dense than I care to use. And I think I'd rather put them into another quilt altogether than try and combine it here. So I'm going to take these out and just put that in there in case I need the extra squares. And that's kind of where I am with this too, just to get some extra colors. So the next step for me is to get everything cut into five inch squares. And then we're going to make some half square triangles. So let me get to that point and we'll get started on this quilt. This pile is all the charm squares sewn together. So I have a total of 168 which means I have 84 pairs. So each focal fabric is paired up with a background fabric. And you can see what we do is we put them together, draw a line from corner to corner. And when we draw that line, that is going to be what we follow to create our stitching line a quarter inch from there. So you set your needle one quarter inch to this side and to this side. When I'm sewing, I start at one corner, I go down one side, and I just sew through all of them, chain stitching every piece as I go, and I turn it around and come back the other direction. So I do all the sewing in one fell swoop. And now what I do is I tr cut them apart and I snip off these little points. These are the, going to be those ears that stick out on the corner of your blocks. And for me, it's just easier when I'm trimming the threads just to cut off a little bit. But be careful you don't go too far because you can lose your corner, you can lose your seam allowance. But what I want to show you here is that this line 
is sewn along both sides. So I took a pencil and put a pencil mark on top of the actual seams that I sewed. And what I want to show you, if we put a ruler here, put that quarter inch mark right on the line, you see that each quarter inch seam is just inside the quarter inch mark. So they're what you call a scant seam. They're not a full quarter inch, they're just a little bit smaller. And the reason I do that is I get a better square in that I don't have to do a lot of fussy trimming. This just works really well for me. Once you become proficient at a quarter inch seam and you can create either a scant or a generous seam, it allows you a lot of flexibility. So if you're not at this point yet, don't worry about it. We can still work through it, but you do not want this seam to be more than a quarter inch, a quarter inch or just a tad less. And you can see it's not even an eighth of an inch. It's a very, very small amount. But when you're working with a diagonal, that little distance of the seam allowance can make a difference in the final size of your square. So once we have this done, we've sewn our seams on both sides, then we're going to cut them in half. And what we do is we're going to cut right on this drawn line in the center. So you can see here, there's the sewn line and I cut right down the middle. And then once that's complete, I press them and I do press it towards the focal fabric, the darker side instead of the background. Now, if your black ground is particularly dark, then that would be the opposite. So I always go to the dark side on this. It just works out best for me. And so you can see, because I trimmed these, these little corners off as I was sewing, I don't get those little dog ears pointing out that have to be trimmed off later. Now, there is one little thing. There's always one thing, isn't there? that I want to show you about trimming these blocks. Now, as I said, when I sew my quarter inch seam, I do a scant seam, I find that when I open this, if I've drawn my line straight from corner to corner and I've sewn straight from edge to edge, then I get a really good square. It, there's a lot of factors. Is your five inch square cut straight? Is the line drawn straight? Are you sewing straight? And if anything's off, this can be a little skewed. But the good news is we can fix that. So what I've done is if you see on this ruler, I have a red line. Now this is the, the 45 degree line that goes from corner to corner across your square. And I have this set right at about just about four and a half inches. And this is about the size that this will finish. Now, again, it depends on your seam allowance. If you go the full quarter inch on your seam allowance, you may get about a four and three eighths inch um, square. So it's all variable, but the most important thing is you're consistent, that all your squares are the same. So I'm showing you different options because this will apply differently depending on what your sewing technique is and where your preferences are and what you focus on. So what I do with this, with this red line, is I'm going to put that right along the stitching line. This goes on the stitching line and this goes on my corner. Now, if you find that your corners are off a little bit here, one's on this side, one's on this side, you may have to pull this in just a little bit, and that's what's going to affect the size of your square. Because if you have to pull this back to get those corners to line up, your square will be smaller. And if you do that on one, you pretty much need to do it on all of them. You're going to have different size squares. And that can make your assembly of the quilt more difficult because you are trying to line up seams on different size squares and that that can get fussy and if you're not a proficient sewer and you're not used to how to line up those seams in order to adjust for those factors you're going to get frustrated so the easiest way is to get five or six of these and measure and determine where on this ruler your seam line falls 
Maybe it is right here. Maybe it's an eighth of an inch this way. But once you determine that, then every block is going to be the same size and the rest of making this quilt is going to be easy. So I want you to understand that I'm showing you a lot of different methods here, not to confuse you, but it depends on where you are in your half square triangle technology, so to speak, because there are different techniques and a lot of people do it a lot of different ways. This way works for me because you see, when I put this on my seam, I don't have anything that I have to trim off. But let's say it was like this, then I would come in and I would trim these pieces and then I have a nice even square. And that's the most important thing is that you square this up well. So we put our blocks together right side. We have a line drawn on our background fabric. We sew a quarter inch down each side. We cut them apart. We press them to the dark side and we have two half square triangles for every pair that we've sewn. And this is what we're going to use to make our quilt. And you will be amazed at how many different layout variations that we're going to have. So I'm going to create a tutorial that you can print out that will have a pictorial step-by-step -step instruction on how to do this. Um, I don't want to confuse you. I'm sorry if I've given you more information than, than you can digest at this point. Just saying it, it sounds like a lot to me, but I do know that getting a square is going to make your half square triangle quilt go together much more simply. So with that said, let's take this to the next level. And what I want to show you is how we put these blocks together. And sometimes depending on the pattern, the blocks will go together like this so that you don't have to line up those seams. You're just lining up the corners. And that works out great because these sew together. You sew your quarter inch seam wherever it works and that's going to work out perfectly. Now, here's another thing. And like I said, I don't want to make this more difficult than it is, but there are some tips that I have found that make such a difference in putting this together. And that is when you're assembling your quilt, you make one seam on the side, and then when all those pieces are sewn together, you put those rows together, those lengths of strips together. You're going to do two different things when you're sewing. The first is when you are sewing these blocks to create your row like this, and then we're going to have another one here, and another one, these seams that go along your row, these seams are going to be just a bit more than a quarter inch. We call that a generous seam. And that just means that we are going to be sewing along, let's see if I'm trying to find one here. With, oh, here's the marks. We're going to sew this just a tad, maybe a thread or two outside of that quarter inch mark. And we do that because when we bring our points in, we're going to go this way, and let's say this is our seam. So we have two together, if I can get them to line up, and hopefully this will hold. So we're gonna say there's our quarter inch seam. What's important when we sew these together is where this point falls. Now, if I take a very, very narrow seam, where does that point go? It goes way up here. So when we go to sew this particular seam, we are going to have a very tough time because look how narrow that is. But if when we sew this, we take it just beyond a quarter inch. So here's a quarter inch. And if I sew that at a quarter inch, see where the point is right there just below a quarter inch from the top but if i take it in just a smidge more not much not even a full eighth of an inch just a couple threads see how it dropped that point down from this upper seam allowance now when i come across here i'm going to get a beautiful point at that intersection where those seams come together the second trick we sew the whole row they look beautiful. We have wonderful points along the way. Everything lines up fabulously well. 
And then when we sew our rows together, we're going to use a scant seam. By sewing a scant seam, we're going to be just above that point, and that's going to ensure that nothing gets cut off. So that is going to make this very easy. So when you're putting blocks together that are not matching diagonal lines, so this diagonal fits to a unsewn corner. See how this, we have an unsewn corner and a diagonal line. Those are very easy to sew together. The ones that get tricky is when you get two like this. And what you want to do is put them on top of each other. Now, here's, here's a point that you have to decide what works for you. Because we've pressed everything to the dark side, if we try and sew this with all the seam allowance on this side and nothing over here, we're going to have a ridge right there. And we don't want to do that. What we're going to do is we'll change that seam that seam allowance to the other side. It'll require a bit of pressing after, but it's going to make this fit much better. So see how we want that to line up so that that seam goes perfectly straight. And the seam allowance on opposite sides allows that little fold between the two to fit together perfectly. Do you see how well that fits? And then you can just put a pin right here, or if you're comfortable, you can just go ahead and hold it with your hand, put it in, get the needle going, and then you're going to sew down. If it's the first seam of the block, you're going to make it a generous seam because that's going to bring your points in closer to the center. When you come around to the second seam, that's going to be your scant seam so that you're farther away from the point, so you don't chop the ends off. So let me go ahead and I'm going to get some of these sewn together and I'm going to show you some examples. And then we're going to look at how to lay this quilt out. There are so many design options. I know we're, we're ready for something different than talking about seam allowance right now. Let's look at some options of how we can lay this out. Then I'll decide on which layout to go with and we'll start getting this piece together. Thanks for your attention. I know this was a lot of information, but I promise once you figure out what works for you, you're going to love it. You'll have a lot of success. There are so many options available when working with half square triangles. And I want to give you some ideas that I've put together with the blocks that I've made. These are some different layouts that I'm familiar with and some of my favorites. This is what's called the sawtooth. One thing that I suggest is that you take a picture and stand back before you sew your quilt together. Check out the bottom row here. All those sawtooth blocks are surrounding a single diamond that squeezed its way in. So it's very easy to get these blocks turned around. So make sure you watch them carefully. This is another very popular half square triangle pattern. It's called the chevron. And oftentimes it's done with rows done in the same color. And I like this one mixed up. I think it looks pretty. Some of my most favorite layouts involve diamonds. These concentric diamonds are really pretty. And there's so much you can do to change them up. And I just added a few blocks around the corners just for some ideas of other options that, that we can create as we're laying out these patterns. Who doesn't love a flock of flying geese? These are wonderful blocks and they're such a fun, fun way to design a quilt top. Here the colors are all mixed together and they look like lots of fun. These fractured diamonds are almost an optical illusion. They are just such a Fun pattern to deal with. They're beautiful. I love the way the angles go in all four directions on this design. This might be one of my favorites. This, of course, is the herringbone. If you look on one side, I paired them up because I thought the pattern actually stands out better when the herringbone is made with a single color. 
the ones that are all mixed up, you don't really get the pattern as much. It's a fun pattern, but you don't really see the herringbone as strongly. So that's something to think about when you're putting this kind of pattern together. This Ohio star is the star of the show. This is beautiful with the stars and diamonds surrounding it. This is a great layout. Pinwheels make a great design. And again on these, I like when each pinwheel is made with its own fabric as opposed to the others that are all mixed up. You don't really see the pattern as well. And I think in, in a layout, a block like this, that I would probably do each block in one fabric, one design. And uh, I'd mix up the background, but I, I like it better where I can see the pinwheel in its own color. I like the square in the square. It really sets off a great pattern with alternating light and dark squares, which makes it fun. And I thought adding a few flying geese in there would make it interesting. When you're doing a layout like this, it's fun to try and add a few different things here and there just to see how you can mix it up and, and create more interest in your quilt. This is also a square and a square, but it's called the square and the square diamonds. I really like this. I like the alternating pattern. I like the large colorful diamonds and the small squares in between. I think this is really, really pretty. This is also a square and a square, but take a look, squint your eyes. Can you see those floating stars throughout the quilt within the uh, design? I think this is such an awesome, awesome pattern. I think I would almost be tempted to use fabrics on the points of those stars that were darker with the light in the middle just so they would stand out more. I think this is a cool, cool layout. I love it. So that's 11 different options. Now, number 12 is going to be whatever I pick, and I haven't gotten there yet. So I can't wait to figure out what that's going to be. This has been fun playing with all these designs and layouts.